Okay, fasten your seatbelts, people. Law of reflection. Here we go. Equipment. We've got a power pack down there turned all the way up to 12. Connected to the power pack via the DC input, we have got a ray box. Note the ray box has got the lamp all the way at the back of the ray box, and the slip maker there is all the way at the front of the ray box, making sure you get the best possible ray of light coming out the front. Now, before you do anything, you do not need to switch that on. You need to make sure that on your, uh, either on your page or your strip of paper, you first place the mirror. And then, once the mirror is in place, you're going to use it to draw a nice straight line along your page. And that straight line is going to represent the mirror. Now, to make it just a little bit more mirror-like, what you do is you put some nice diagonal lines along one side of the line. And now anybody, or at least any scientist, looking at this particular diagram will know that that line represents a mirror and that where these diagonal lines are is the back of the mirror. Okay, next, roughly in the middle of your mirror, you are going to draw a line with quite an unusual name. That line is going to be perpendicular to the mirror, so at 90 degrees to the mirror. So we use a protractor to mark 90 degrees. We draw the line on, and then we label it. And that line is called the normal. So the normal line is at 90 degrees to the mirror. Okay, now you are ready to use the ray box. So, you place the mirror back on to your page or your sheet of paper. And we switch on the ray box. Now, this is the clever bit. We're going to point the ray box so that it hits the mirror at the exact same point as the normal line. So you can see you've got a nice pattern there of the ray of light coming into the mirror, it hitting the mirror at the same point as the normal line, and then it is reflected or bounced off that mirror. Now you're going to want to draw that, that, the diagram of that ray of light, but that's difficult with all the equipment in the way. So instead of trying to fit a ruler in there now, what we do is we plot a point where the ray of light is coming out of the ray box. We know it hits the mirror uh, at the same point as the normal, and then we plot another point right in the centre of the ray of light, where the ray of light has been reflected from the mirror. Then, when we take the equipment away, it's now dead easy to get a 30 centimetre ruler onto the page, and we can draw our incoming or incident ray using our plotted point and where it hits normal. Always put an arrow on there to indicate the direction the light is travelling. And we've got our reflected ray. So we've got our incident ray, and our reflected ray. The other thing we've got, as you can see, is two angles. We've got an angle in between our incident ray and the normal, and this is called the angle of incidence. And then we've got a second angle here, in between the normal and the reflected ray, and this is the angle of reflection. So that's the angle of incidence, and the angle of reflection. So in your experiment, in your table, what you are going to do is compare the angle of incidence with the angle of reflection. Now you measure these obviously using a protractor, but the mistake that people often make, they start lining the protractor up with the mirror, that's incorrect. This time you line the protractor up with the normal line. So the normal line is on zero degrees and you measure the angle from the normal line. Once you've measured the angle of incidence, you then turn your protractor over, again, lining it up with the normal line, so the normal line is on zero degrees, and you measure the angle from the normal line, and you put those two angles into your table. Uh, I'm expecting three people in each group. I'm expecting every single person in each group to have one of these diagrams in their exercise book. I would suggest that one person has a really, really big angle of incidence, one person somewhere in the middle like mine, and one person a very small angle of incidence, so you've then got a range of results in your results table. Right, off you go.